Okay, we are going to talk about the parts of an argument. So, the first thing that you need to know is what a claim is. Uh, a claim is an arguable statement. So, the claim shares your opinion, and it is something that can be argued one way or another. So, it is important that when you pick a claim, that you stick to that claim. If you're going to pick up the other part of the argument, that comes later in your essay. So in the beginning of your essay, it is all about proving your point. So for example, students should be allowed to chew gum at school. That's actually one of the uh, topics that you have an option to do. And I am giving you options for this first one. Um, there are two sides to this issue. And I could argue that chewing gum at school is a good or a bad idea. There are two types of claims. Uh, first of all, there is one main claim for your whole essay where you have the introduction paragraph, which is your thesis, um, and then you'd have something like students should be allowed to chew gum. Secondary claims would be your reasons for the main claim, and they're woven into your body paragraphs. So you have to have a topic for each of those paragraphs that supports that thesis. Gum can help you focus. If students chew gum, they'd be less stressed. Uh, gum can improve your mood and lead to students being nicer to each other. Okay, So essentially, once you pick your claim, you've got to then uh, go through the th other points that you're trying to make for your body paragraphs. Let's see if I can get to the next slide. There we go. All right, so this is the counterclaim. So the counterclaim is the opposite of what you're saying. This is um, anticipating what your uh, opponent in the argument uh, is going to say, what they might disagree with. So you need to address your audience's concerns so that you can refute them. To do this well, you must know your audience. So for example, my teacher might say, Gum may cause a distraction if you chew it loudly. And a principal might say, gum causes messes that take too much of our custodian's time and makes our school look bad. So you have to anticipate those counterclaims and squash it into your paper. Okay, so if you squash it before, it's harder for them to argue. And arguing, by the way, is not about raising your voice. Argument is about your words. Words are more powerful than tone. All right, so how do I respond to the counterclaim? This is what you're gonna put, this This is important because in eighth grade, um, the counterclaim has to be in your paper. It's now in your um, assessment rubric. So that robo grader is gonna be looking for that counterclaim and I'm gonna have some specific ways that you state that counterclaim so that you can beat the robo, robo grader. And don't forget, um, argument writing is on everything that you're going to take in the future. So I know you know it's been on the state test for the last few years. It's going to be on the state test in high school. It's not going away. Argument is uh, apparently a big deal, um, and it's one of the most important essays. So that's why we saved it for last. So you've already done your informational essays, and you've learned how to research. You're going to combine all of those things for an argument, OK? So what is a rebuttal? The rebuttal is the comeback. How will you shoot down their disagreement and bring them back to your side to see your vision and why you are correct? So for example, if students weren't afraid of being caught, they wouldn't feel the need to stick gum to desks to hide it from their teachers. So that's one reason that you might use to squash that argument that the other person might anticipate. So one thing, let me move me. Of course, I'm going to get a phone call. I don't know how to cause this, so I'm going to continue to go. So just ignore my my phone call. Let me see who that is. I'll have to get that in a minute. Okay. So sorry, I'm not starting over. So um, one thing that you need to do when you are um, thinking about your argument. There are these Greek terms called ethos, pathos, and logos. And keeping these three things in mind 
while you are writing your essay um, will help you to have a stronger argument, okay? So this is actually a screenshot of a video of the three different types. So I'm gonna go to the next one. Um, you can pause the video if you'd like to see this further, but I'm gonna go to the next slide so that you can kind of see what I have done um, to explain it. So um, ethos is a Greek word for ethics, okay? These are professional opinions, celebrity endorsements, and customer reviews. Um, this is the intelligence, the trustworthiness, and the morals part, okay? So when you're writing an uh, argument, you want to apply what you want them to think. You're going to not apply, but you're going to focus in on the ethics part, what's morally right, okay? The next one is logos. And logos down here at the bottom is um, I can't get the thing to go away. Oopsie, sorry. <laughs> Let me move this. I can't get this to move. Of course, I'm having all kinds of problems. So the logos is the logic part, okay? This is the statistics and the facts. This is the evidence, the data. Um, okay, so sorry, I got a little technical difficulty. So I just explained logos, I believe, in the last video. So the last one is um, this is the pathos. So pathos means passion in um, Greek language. So if you look at the word sympathy, you'll actually see part of uh, pathos in there. So that's where that word comes from. It means heartwarming story or personal experience. Um, so you want to appeal to the heart. This is where like commercials of those dogs that are abused, that people um, donate money to, um, that's appealing to your pathos. So if you look at the pictures, it's brain, heart, and data, okay? So think about those things as you are um, arguing your point because those are gonna make your argument even stronger. On the state test, um, I have a, if I can get this to go to the next thing, there we go. Um, I have an acronym for you to memorize so that you will get, get everything that you need to have in your argument. So um, it's a treat, okay? So um, the beginning paragraph is the thesis. You start with the background information on the topic like you have with every other essay that we've done, and you're going to end with the thesis, um, and that's going to be what you're proving in an argument uh, paper. Then um, you're going to have reasons. In the next three paragraphs, you'll have a reason with evidence, a reason with evidence, and a reason with evidence. These are um, the sub ideas of uh, supporting your thesis. Okay. So the next one is your alternate claim. So this is the counterclaim that you're going to address and squash. You're giving reasons why um, the opposite view of yours would be flawed. Okay. So um, you might start that paragraph with some people might say and then use the other part part of the argument and and make sure you give reasons why that's a bad way of thinking and then lastly you're going to tie up um, the argument with restating your thesis and your ideas that you've already set up in the top with the reasons okay so your options for writing um, and this is in the slides You'll have six different options for this one, and I do not want you using um, the internet at all other than just this. So you're gonna use these sources, and it's more practicing like it's the state test, okay? Topic number one, should gum be allowed in school? And you've got source A, source B, C, and D. So you can use all four of those sources for your evidence. Topic two, should our students be required to wear a school uniform? You've got article A, Source B, source C. Topic three, should plastic bags be banned? Source A, lots of data there. Source B and source C. Topic four, should school be year round? There's A, B and C. Try skip one, yes I did. Topic five, should seatbelts be required on school buses? We have source A, 
B and C. And then lastly, uh, we have topic six. Should students be disciplined for profanity on school grounds? We have source A, B, C, and D.